Hi, my name is Franklin Bristow. I'm an instructor in the Department of Computer Science at the University of Manitoba. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I set up OBS Studio, a free and open source screen recording solution for recording your desktop. First, you're going to need to download and install OBS Studio. Go to the OBS Studio homepage, which I'm showing here right now at obsproject.com and download the correct package for your operating system. Once you finish the download, you can start the installer and you can accept all of the default options for installation. Nothing needs to change here. I'm going to start this video by assuming that you already have OBS Studio installed. The first time you run OBS Studio, you're going to be prompted to complete the setup wizard. The setup wizard will help you pick reasonable configuration options for your intended use. OBS can be used to stream to live services like YouTube and Twitch, but we're going to be configuring it to record video that we will upload to our own LMS, so you unlearn. Start OBS up from either the start menu or the desktop icon or uh, after you have completed the installation process. The first time it starts up, the auto configuration wizard is going to appear. When this dialog appears, you can click yes so that it will continue with the auto configuration wizard. In the next dialog that appears, you're going to want to select optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming, but then click next. In the dialog that appears after that, you're going to be given some options about choosing the screen resolution and the number of frames per second. The base canvas resolution can be left at 1920 by 1080 or use current, whatever that option is when it comes up on the screen. I'm going to choose FPS as 30. That's enough for video recording uh, lecture that you're going to be giving. Once you've done that, click next. At this point, OBS is going to run a self-test self and it's going to try several different encoding settings. You should just let OBS complete this test. On the last screen here, you're given a review of all of the different settings that OBS has selected. You can just click Apply Settings. Now that you've completed the setup wizard, you're going to need to configure what OBS is going to record, which is called a source. At the bottom left-hand corner, there are two different uh, tabs, two different panels that you can choose from here. We're going to use this Sources panel. First, I'm going to set up my display to be recorded. I'm going to click this plus icon here in the bottom of the Sources tab, and I'm going to choose Display Capture. On this, I can just click OK. This is going to let me give a name to it and make sure that the source is visible. We can accept the default. I'll click OK. On the next screen, we have the option to choose which display is going to be used. This system only has one display attached to it, so I'm going to stick with that, but you may need to choose a different display if you have more than one display. You also want to make sure that your capture cursor is enabled so that your mouse will show up in the screen recordings that you do. Once you've done that, you can click OK. You may notice here that my window only shows uh, the top corner of the screen that I have on my display. So to fix that, we can right click on the display itself and then choose Resize Output Source Size. It will fit the display. OBS is going to give you a warning here, but it's okay to accept this, so click Yes. Now you can see everything that your screen can currently see. The next thing we're going to configure is that we can overlay some text on top of the screen so that we can put things like a copyright notice. So in the sources panel, I'm going to click that plus icon again, and here I'm going to click text. I'm going to choose text. I'll accept these default sources for creating the source. I'll click OK. And in the text field here, we can enter the text that we want to display. So I'm going to write copyright. 2020 Franklin Bristow. You can customize things like the font and the color of the font, but I'm going to accept the defaults here and I'm going to click OK. After we click OK, the text appears in the top left corner of the screen. You can see a red outline here with some handles. 
you can click on the text and you can drag it to where you want it to appear in the video once you are doing the recording. You can also optionally overlay yourself from your webcam. There's no webcam attached to this system, but I'll show you the steps that you need to go through to get that set up. In the same sources panel, you can click the plus icon here, and from there you can choose video capture device. You can click OK on this panel. Again, there are no webcams attached to the system, so I can't choose it, but what you will see if you have a webcam here is a picture of yourself from the webcam on your device. When you click OK, that image is going to appear in the top left corner of your screen, and just like the text, you can click on it and drag it to move it around. You can also resize the video by clicking on it and then choosing one of the handles that appears in the outline of the video. So there should be an outline surrounding the video with red bars or red lines. You can click the little boxes that are at the corners of that to resize it. The final setting that we're going to need to change so that the videos that you record can be uploaded to UMLearn is the output format that OBS uses. To do that, click on File and then Settings. And in the Settings dialog that appears, click on this Output tab. In the Output tab, there's a Recording panel. In the Recording panel, you can see where the videos are going to be stored. So mine are going to be put into my Videos directory. The setting that we're interested in here is the Recording Format. I'm going to change this to MP4. MP4 is the recording format that you should use if you want students to see a video player in their web browser when they navigate to a file in UMLearn. You'll note that OBS Studio gives you a warning about choosing MP4 or Move as a format, and it's telling you that if the software crashes while you're doing a recording, it may not be able to correctly write the file's output. Anecdotally, I haven't had any experiences with OBS crashing while I'm recording something. So I'm okay with this, so I'm going to click OK. At this point, all of our settings are complete. We do not need to do this again. This is a one-time setup. The next step then is to start recording video. My advice uh, to start would be that you should mute the system audio before you start doing a recording. Any system sounds that happen while you're recording a video will sound very loud in the recording. So I would advise you to mute the system audio before you start. There's two different ways that you can start recording a video in OBS. The first is from the main window itself. You can click this button, Start Recording, to start a recording. That will change to Stop Recording. Once you've finished your video, you can click the Stop, stop Recording button. While you're doing the recording, you can just conduct your lecture as you would regularly conduct it, uh, moving between windows and showing uh, slides or other uh, media or content to your students. The other option that you have for starting a recording, and this makes it a little bit more professional, is to hide the main OBS window. So in your system tray area, you can click on the OBS Studio icon once with your left button. That will hide the window. Once the window is hidden, you can right click on it and start recording. So at this point, OBS is recording. I can proceed with the lecture as normal. This error is showing up or this warning is showing up because I'm doing this in a virtual system. I'm going to stop the recording by right-clicking on that system tray icon and clicking Stop Recording. The videos that OBS has recorded are now available in my videos directory. So I'm going to open Windows Explorer here. And I'm going to navigate to my videos directory. And you can see that there are two recordings here corresponding to the two different videos that I've captured with OBS. 
you don't need to do anything more to these video files to upload them to UMLearn, and you can upload them to UMLearn as you would any other content that you want to provide to your students. When a student views this video file that you have uploaded, they will see a video player in their web browser. And that's it.